Hey everybody, Lars here. Time for the second review video for Unit 1. So we're just beginning. Um, you already did the first one where we just went over some of the basics. We did some arithmetic. You learned about input and you learned a little bit about casting. We're going to start today by looking at something called the relational operators. And the way we're going to use the relational operators is we're going to play around with variables that are called Boolean variables. All right, I whipped up some code for us, so let's get right to it. Hopefully, we can make this a nice short video and get you the stuff you need. But, and I always say this, I always struggle between length of the videos because a lot of people say people don't want to see you type, just show them code. And I'm like, no, I'd rather see people, you know, see the code being crafted and I can talk over it and then I can have some time, some space to breathe and talk about the things I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. So I go back and forth. That said, I want to make them short and concise because I don't want to bore you. And if you look down and see that a video is 45 minutes, you're going to be like, ah, I don't know if I want to do this. That said, it's got to be long enough to you know, cover enough material and do the right thing so that you get something out of it and you learn something. So I'm always, you know, there's always that tension there, that, that yeah, back and forth. This shouldn't be so bad because we're going to do some interesting stuff. And one thing leads to the next thing. And you'll see what I'm talking about because we are about to get started. Let's say I just have a simple variable and call it var1. And I'm going to assign it the value, ready? True. Now, you can see that idle made it orange. So it's a keyword. You've got to remember to capitalize it. And now I can do the same with false. So now I have true and false. So now, and I will get our little area where we can work here set up. When I run that, it says true. So I can print true to the screen. Let's get this set up. So I can go back and forth, back and forth. All right? So immediately right out of the box, you're probably saying it's like, hey, that's great. It's a really good job. Well, who cares? Okay, you took a variable, you made it true. I could make it the string true and do basically the same thing. Okay? This is where it comes into play. You'll notice up here you have the relational operators. Well, you can use them. Okay? in comparisons and create variables with the results. So I can say var3 and give it the value of, let's say 20 is greater than 10. Is 20 greater than 10? Well, it was the last time I checked. So now that will put the Boolean value true into that variable. So if we print var3, it'll say true, okay? But if we switch the sign, and we'll say, is 20 less than 10? Is 20 less than 10? Mm -mm -mm. So now the value false will be assigned there. Okay? And at this point, for the second time this evening, very quickly, where's my coffee? For the very second time, we are, good Lord, don't drink coffee when you have one of these crazy Gandalf beards. I gotta trim this thing. This is getting a bit much. It's starting to look like a kook. It's okay it just, if the top is crazy too, then you look like a homeless person. And this is like a homeless, a little bit like a homeless person beard. But if you're high and tight up here and then homeless person beard, well then people get kind of get the idea that you did it on purpose. Then they just think you're, oh my, that's a, that guy's weird. So there's homeless and there's weird. If I trim it down a little bit, I guess it'll look normal. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, that variable three is now false, okay? So you're probably saying, okay, big deal, who cares? This is why we care. I'm gonna show you right now. We can make decisions based on these values. Look at that, the keyword if. I'm gonna say if, and then I can say 20 is greater than 10, then colon, which means I'm gonna start a code block. Now watch, when I hit enter, idle in dense four for me. So for the first time, we're starting a code block now. We're going to create a code block of what's going to get run if that condition is true. I'm just going to do one thing. I'm going to print GT for greater than. Okay? So, and then if you just hit the backspace once, it'll take you back to the regular indentation. So look at that line right there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to comment that out so I don't have to worry about it. So now, if 20 is greater than 10, which as we said, it is, then print GT. So when I run this little piece of code, it does just that, it prints GT. But now let's go look at this. 
What if I do the opposite? Is 20 less than 10? It's not. So what happens when I run things? Nothing. Okay? It just doesn't do anything. So we can do that now. We can test the truth or the false of this condition and act on that. So only when this is true will we do that. Okay? So all of a sudden our tools are getting a little bit more powerful now. Now we have the ability to look at a couple of values, compare them, see if they're equal, see if one is greater than the other. And depending on the truth of that condition, we can now do something. We're making a decision. Okay? That's actually a powerful thing. Now, if we want to do something different here, like I'm going to say if 20 is greater than 10, print greater than. Okay? But let's say we wanted to do something different if the opposite was true. What would we do? Well, at this point, I think I want to start using variables. So what I'm going to do, I'll leave that there so you have it there to see, is I'm going to create num1, and I'm going to make it equal to 10, and I'm going to create num2, and I'm going to make it equal to 20. And then I'm going to say if num1 is greater than num2, print greater than. So just as a little test, my num1 is not greater than num2, so let's make it so. And now when I run it, I do see greater than because 30 is indeed greater than 20. So now if I come in here and I change the variable and I switch that condition, nothing prints, okay? Let's say we wanted to print something if it wasn't true. We can do that in Python. We have something called the else statement. So if that condition num1 greater than num2 is true, it prints gt. Otherwise, it'll print lt for less than. So now when I run things, it says less than. Okay? And now it's greater than. So you think to yourself, oh, everything's okay now, everything is good, but what if I have that? Okay? What if they're the same? I run the code, and I get less than, but is it? It's not, they're equal. A lot of times in a situation like this, you think you have <coughs> what we computer geeks would call a binary choice, a zero or a one, a black or a white, a true or a false, but it turns out this is not that case. There's three things we can have here, less than, greater than, equal, right down the middle. So how am I gonna handle that in my little structure right here? I could do it, using something called L if. It's a mixture of else and if. I could say if num1 is greater than num2, print that. And then I can say else if, and the reason you put the if there is because now you're gonna do another condition. Less than num2, I'm gonna do this again just to make sure my indentation is right. Print that, okay? So now I'm testing to see if it's greater than, and if it is, I print greater than, and I jump out of the structure. I'm not gonna look at this the minute I do something. Then I'm gonna say elif, look and see if it's less than. Now, if it's not greater than, and it's not less than, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it has to be equal to. So the last thing I'm going to do, without having to check anything, is I'm gonna say else, print eq for equals. Because if it's greater than, I'm going to print gt. If it's less than, I print lt. The only thing left is equality. It has to be if it gets to that point. All right? Let's test our theory. I'm going to first do greater than. Let's run it. All right, gt. So far, I'm in fat city. Now, I'm going to make it a 10. All right, less than. I'm in pretty good shape. Now, the big one. The big test. The tension's killing me. All right, you ready? We get eq. Because it said, is it greater than? No. So that's false. I'm not going to run that. L if num1 less than? No. That's false too. So then I go to the else and it kind of acts as the default. It says, all right, well then just print equal. Okay? So the reason I use this as an example in this particular video is because I want you aware. A lot of things that may at times look like binary situations, they're not binary situations at all. Okay? Um, one last thing I want to do, and I'm going to teach you a little trick right here. If you take three single quotes, one, two, three, you'll see everything goes green like it's a, it's a string. You come down here, one, two, three. Everything in there will be ignored. And now I can just start typing code fresh right here. Let's say I got a variable. I'll call it num4, and I'll call it 70. What if I want to see 
if that number is in a particular range, for our purposes, let's say it's greater than 30 but less than 80, which our number is, I could do something like this. I could say if num4 is greater than 30, and if that's true, then I can do another if, and I can say if num4 is less than 80, and if that's true, then I can print in range, okay? So if my number is greater than 30 and less than 80, it'll pop up in range and I should be good. So when I run this code, it says in range, which is true. Now, if I if it were 20 and I ran it, nothing would happen because is 20 greater than 30? No, so I don't run anything in the code block anymore, okay? Anything in that indentation isn't going to get run anymore, so nothing happens. Let's say I do, let's do it nice and tight. 81, same thing, okay? Because I got by the first one, but then is num4 less than 80? No, it's not, so well, I don't print in range, okay? Now, and then, you know, I go back to 70, and I'm back in business because I'm in range. This is the problem. You look at that code right there, and you say to yourself, yeah, it gets the job done, <clears throat> but it's not very readable. It doesn't really jump out at you what the purpose of it is to check a range. Um, one of the big things about Python, you know, taking the syntax out of the way, doing some other things, one of the reasons why we consider it a good language for education is because it's readable. <clears throat> Usually you can read the code and, and figure out what's going on. So I'm thinking to myself, there might be a better way to do this. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use Boolean algebra. I want to see if that number's in range. So I'm going to say if num4 is greater than 30 and you see how idle made it orange? It's a keyword. And num4 is less than 80. Well, if this is true, then I print in range, okay? Now, let's see if it works first, it better. In range, lowercase, oh, my OCD will not allow that. So now it's uppercase. That, to my mind, my programmer brain rests when I see that. That's a little bit more Pythonic and a little more easily understood. If that condition and that condition, because what you have with an and, and if you ever took a logical design course or a system course, where you went through truth tables, when you have an and, you say, is this condition true? And is this condition true? And only if both are true, do you then print in range, okay? So if one of them is false, like in the case of 81, because num4 as 81 will not be less than 80, if we rerun this, nothing happens, because that's not true, that's false. True and false is false in an and context. Okay, now if I did an or, see how that's also made orange? Well then this one's gonna be true. So all of a sudden it'll say in range again, even though it really isn't. That's why you can't really use the or. Okay, because with an or, only one of them has to be true. Okay, so you could do this with an or, but you'd wanna check the, the ranges on the other end. You wouldn't wanna check the inside, okay? So I'm gonna change that back to my and. And do the 70, like that. So we can also do not. So let's do that. That will do the same thing, okay? So if I do 70 now, it comes up in range. Because what happened? I made num1 greater than 80. Well, that's false because it's in range, but I turned it around with the not. The not turns a false to true or a true to false, okay? So basically, I switched the signs, but then I negated it by putting not in front of it. Not takes a true value, flip, flips it around, and makes it false. Simplest way to show you that. Hold on a minute. One, two, three is I just take var5, I make it equal to true, and then I print not var5. False, easiest thing in the world to do, okay? It just takes a true and makes it false, or it takes a false and it makes it true. Flips it, all right? 
So, actually I like that little piece of code. We'll leave that there so you can play around with it later. Okay, so that is a quick run through, but I mean, it was a quick run through, but a lot of the stuff we did today is really powerful because you figured out what Boolean variables are. They hold a value of either true or false. And then you learn about the relational operators. You have, you could see uh, to test if two things are equal, you have equal, equal. All right, remember one equal sign is assignment in Python. Equal, equal, test to see if something is equal. You have greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, not with the, uh, well, not with the Boolean algebra down there, but you can test for not equal to by using the exclamation point equals, okay? You can do all those things, and then you can take the results of your conditional and make decisions based on it, okay? So you could have the user put in a number, and then you could test if that number is at a certain limit or in a certain range, and depending on the answer, then go execute a block of code. You can now use logic and use decisions to do your coding, you're codifying your logic in your brain. If temperature greater than 100, print, boy, it's really hot out. If temperature less than 32, I'm going Fahrenheit, 32 degrees, wow, it's cold out. Things along those lines. Now we're making decisions. Now we can look at things, okay, and start to examine things. Now we're putting more tools in our programming toolbox, and we're going to be able to solve some problems, okay? Um, that's it for this video. There's probably going to be a third video for Unit 1. Usually I sit down real quick, 10 minutes, I'll whip up a program. It's either a Fahrenheit to Celsius converter program or it'll be a make change, you know, give a boatload of pennies and then say how many dollars, how many quarters, blah, blah, blah. Um, because in the past I've gotten feedback and students have said, I like that video where you just start from scratch and talk through going through a program. It just from from soup to nuts, we just go through and we create a program on the fly. Pretty much like you're going to want to do it when you do your assignments. So I like that video. That said, you aren't going to need that video to do the assignments. What's going to be asked of you when you get the Unit 1 assignments is all contained in the slides, the Zell readings, and the first two review videos. Because this, as you probably have guessed, this review video went over the second half of the unit one slides. All right? All right, keep an eye out for announcements. Know what's going on. And a little bit down the line, we're gonna come out with that third video. All right? All right, then you have a good night. And I'll talk to you later.